Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the mechanism of action of the anti-cancer chemotherapy uh, cisplatin, which stands for cis-diamine dichloroplatinum. So we've discussed how uh, this drug cisplatin forms intra uh, intra uh, strand crosslinks between guanine and adenine organic bases within the DNA. Okay, and it's preferred uh, cross-link to form is between two guanine organic bases on the same strand of DNA. We've discussed how these intra-strand cross-links are going to stop uh, transcription and replication leading to the prevention of the cell cycle, okay, and that's anti-proliferative. We're now discussing how uh, the uh, formation of these intra-strand cross-links is, um, is going to be recognized by the DNA damage pathway leading to the activation of p53. So we've just seen now that the checkpoint kinase 1 or the checkpoint kinase 2 has phosphorylated p53 and saved it from the ubiquitin uh, proteasomal degradation pathway. Okay, so what we now want to see is what is p53 going to do within the cell. Okay, so it's a transcription factor. So, in all, all eukaryotic genes, you have a region of DNA that is, up, whoops, that is upstream of the gene known as the promoter region. So let me show you the gene here. So this rectangle here, this is going to represent the gene. Okay, and I'll colour this in some distinctive colour. What about turquoise? So in turquoise here, we have the gene within the DNA. Okay, and then upstream of the gene, okay, here, in all eukaryotic genes, upstream of the gene, you have a region known as the promoter region, or the promoter box. So this is the promoter region. Okay, so let me colour that in as well. So in purple here, this is the promoter region. Right, so... Uh, Basically, what is the point of the promoter region? Well, it is not co it's not coding, basically. It will not actually be uh, translated into protein. Instead, its role is to control the expression of the downstream gene. So, in order for the gene product of this gene to actually be produced, what has to happen is the RNA polymerase enzyme has to bind to the promoter region, and it has to work its way along the DNA and uh, transcribe it into a piece of mRNA. Okay? Now, so... The initial step is that the RNA polymerase has to bind to this promoter region. So if the promoter region has a greater affinity for the binding of the RNA polymerase, then more RNA polymerases will bind to the promoter region, and you'll get more mRNA being produced, and therefore more of the gene product of the eventual protein encoded by this gene being actually produced. So the promoter region is where the RNA polymerase enzyme binds, and the affinity of the promoter region for uh, binding to the RNA polymerase determines the expression of the downstream gene. Now, a transcription factor is any molecule which binds to the promoter region and alters the affinity of the promoter region for the RNA polymerase. So you can have transcription factors which enhance the expression of the downstream gene by increasing the affinity of the promoter region for the RNA polymerase enzyme, and you can also have transcription factors which repress the expression of the gene by reducing the affinity of uh, the RNA polymerase for binding to that promoter region. Now, P53 is a transcription factor, but it actually functions as a tetramer. So four P53 proteins come together to make a tetramer, which then binds to the promoter region, and that increases the expression of a whole bunch of genes. So what genes does P53 increase the expression of? Well, what was the whole point of this pathway? We had found DNA damage. We had found this chemical modification to DNA. So we want to activate the machinery involved in DNA repair. So basically, you are going to upregulate the proteins involved in DNA repair for a start. In addition, you're going to upregulate the genes involved in stopping the cell cycle. So cell cycle inhibitors are going to have their expression increased. 
okay? So uh, these are proteins which stop the cell from dividing into two, okay? Uh, and that makes sense because um, if you've got a cell which has suffered mutations uh, or some sort of DNA damage, you don't want that cell um, going through the division process because firstly you risk that uh, the DNA damage might be worsened by the uh, mitotic process. In addition, you risk that the damage might be uh, passed on to two cells and therefore it could potentially be amplified. So you want the cell cycle to be stopped. So you increase the expression of cell cycle inhibitors which will stop cell division and you also activate the DNA repair mechanisms. Those are your short-term actions. Now, if P53 levels remain high for a very long time, that would indicate that the DNA damage remains for a very long time that would suggest that it's just not being repaired, okay? So that suggests that the cell is failing to repair the DNA damage. So the last option that's available is to commit suicide. So if P53 levels remain high for a very long time, that will indicate that the DNA damage is just not going away, and the cell will now commit apoptosis, and it's P53 that's responsible for inducing this, so it will produce pro-apoptotic factors. Okay, and um, you will drive the cell into producing this, because if you're giving cisplatin uh, repeatedly, then you'll be continuously uh, re um, re-putting um, in the chemical modification to the DNA. So the cell will repair the DNA and then another cisplatin will come and bind and produce an intracellular cross-think, uh, sorry, an intra-strand uh, cross-think. So uh, you'll be getting continuous insult to the DNA and that will mean that P53 is continuously on and that means that you've got a good chance of inducing uh, apoptotic um, um, factors. Okay, so, to summarise, uh, if you've got a working P53 pathway within a cell, then uh, cisplatin can induce the cell to undergo apoptosis. Now, this may not actually be effective in cancer cells, because often this pathway that we've seen, whereby you sense DNA damage, okay, and then that leads to the activation of the P53 protein. Often there are mutations in the proteins in this pathway. Specifically, there are often mutations in P53 itself. Uh, I think 50% of cancer cells have mutations in P53 or members of its associated pathway. And P53 is a very common uh, target, basically. Okay, because... Uh, this pathway protects you effectively against genetic damage to your DNA. And if it goes, then the cell is not going to repair the uh, genetic damage to the DNA. And that uh, spawns you on to develop cancer. Uh, because it means that you can then undergo all sorts of mutations with nothing actually repairing these mutations. And uh, that means that these cells can gain some very dangerous phenotypes. Okay, so, uh, if the P53 pathway is uh, available, however, then cisplatin may well be able to kill the cancer cells by activating it.